All right, so we're going to do a real quick, fun game before we actually start this real podcast. Uh, normally, if I was good at producing shows, I would have brought our theme song to play to you introduce want me to us. Just do an acapella? No, 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 no. <laughs> so what I'm going to do I, I is refuse. we're just going to play this fun game where no we're going to pretend that it played and you guys just lose your fucking minds over it. It's going to so, sound like <laughs> it's going to sound terrible, but let's just do this for fun. All right, so like, let's just pretend. Theme song's over. Everyone's excited because we're doing a podcast. Go! Hey, everybody, and welcome to another episode of Horror Movie Night live at the Creature Feature Weekend. This week on the show, we're going to be talking about Leatherface, Chainsaw Massacre 3, uh, the final movie in our listener-submitted month. And the person who submitted this is sitting front row of the theater. Which is wild. So, hold on a second. It, it I'm going to read the email that we got. Wait, I thought Eli was going to read the email. Uh, I didn't realize how high up we were going to be. I'm just going to have him <laughs> explain himself. <laughs> All right. I so mean, he is at your height, Scott. I, I don't think he's getting <laughs> he's up here actually easily. He's two inches taller than me. All right. So the email that we got from Eli says, I've been a huge fan since I discovered you guys two years ago. You've been the background commentary while I've been getting my master's degree. I love to support you guys on Patreon, and I love how Scott has come around on Texas Chainsaw Massacre 2, and I know you yes. all love the original and hate it part four. However, <laughs> you're missing one in the, catalog, the catalog that I really think you have to hit. Leatherface, Texas Chainsaw Massacre 3. I love this film, one of Viggo Morganson's first r movie roles, and the character of Alfredo is full of great lines. New Line tried their hardest to make Leatherface into the next Freddy or Jason, and it failed horribly. The movie is way better than the Rotten Tomatoes score indicates. All the best, Eli. Eli, come up here real quick. <laughs> <laughs> Let's yeah. get a round of applause for Eli. He or came boo up here him to... for making this fucking choice. Yeah, so let's... Feel free to share Joshua's mic real quick, but uh, oh, well, well he's explain up, we, we should probably explain that. Like, Joshua I'll, does I'll be cosplay. the Paul to your, oh, yeah, Josh, to your John. We okay. got Joshua cosplay sitting in for yeah, Brian, Joshua who's does is, saving is, money for his wedding. But yeah. uh, Eli, what what were you thinking? <laughs> so when I went ahead and I picked this film, it was because I had just finished watching it while I was supposed <laughs> to be getting hours of work done and was essentially getting about a third of it done, and. You guys were bragging about the fact that you hit a full series with uh, Basket Case. Yeah, we watched all we, three Basket yep, Cases. Yep. It's a great trilogy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it actually and is. I figured you needed to hit the four that I consider the canon <laughs> in the Texas Chainsaw <laughs> Massacre series that has eight movies. So we're I'm not hitting all eight movies, buddy. No. No, I would never ask you guys to watch any of those. <laughs> yes, you would. Movies. You fucking yeah, you, you literally did. You asked <laughs> us to watch one of those. Yeah, <laughs> yeah but of that's the why we're here. Four. It and starts there. <laughs> it starts there. That's fair. So I went ahead, and I do love this movie. I'm not going to say it's fantastic. I would say it deserves double the Rotten Tomato score that it has. Wait, so still what do you know what the Rotten Tomato score is? It's a generous 35. You so know. you think it, it is a have... 17, and I'm saying it deserves oh, it. Oh, okay. 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 I was going to – I wanted to know who these critics were. They got <laughs> it up to a 35. Well, what's but... the audience score? That's what I want to know. I can't remember what the audience score yeah. is. Because, like, I want to know what the percentage of audience score is just you being like, <laughs> here are all of my alt accounts that fucking love TCM Leatherface. <laughs> yeah, I happen to have 17 other email accounts that I've gone ahead <laughs> and really just written in a ton on movies that so, I love. That so here's a question. Loves. For all of your alt email accounts, how many of them end in 69? Like, is it... <laughs> and do you have the same password? I have the same password for that all of them. 69. But I do no They all end in 27. <laughs> so if you're ever, like, scouring Rotten Tomatoes and want to see a good score, just look for that end number 27, and you probably <laughs> hit the nail on the head. All right. Well, thank you, Eli. Let's give him a round of applause for coming up here. Okay, and guys. And now let's proceed with giving him a whole lot of shit for 40 minutes. Yeah, so... Yeah, <laughs> so yeah that's the Can we plan. talk about the fact that, like, I've said it multiple times on the show before that the first Texas Chainsaw Massacre is arguably the greatest horror movie ever made. And somehow, immediately from that point, every other film in this franchise stopped being, hey, this movie works because it's this really gritty, terrifying look at an insane family to just be like, how wacky are these folks? But that's what <laughs> makes TCM 2 so good. I don't know what your problem – you – okay, so backstory for I anybody. Let's not backstory too much. You've got I'm 45 gonna, I, minutes. I just, have to, I just have to throw this out really quickly. Go for it. In the guise of that, what is the general deal with New Line Cinema – acquiring series and then throwing the primary character as the first name in it. Jason yeah. goes to hell. Freddy's dead. 
Leatherface. Well, because they don't have any Massacre faith that people know what those kids like. They don't. They're like, no one knows Texas Chainsaw Massacre. They know Leatherface. Well, the thing that makes Leatherface great is the fact that he is not the fixture of a film. He's the 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 condiment yeah. in the sandwich, you know. Yeah, he's the in the human sandwich. <laughs> I, I was thinking he's more of like a tartar sauce, personally. You know, right. a little bit, little bit extra special. So here's my thought about. <laughs> TCM2, and here's the backstory that Matt doesn't want you to hear. So <laughs> I started d- podcasting with Matt seven plus years ago. Hated TCM2. I think I watched it on a dare or something, and I was like, this is bullshit. This is nothing like the first one. And then I pick it so that I can rip it apart for horror movie night, and, and it magically becomes one of my favorite sequels. <laughs> and I, it's just because it's so incredibly bombastic and over the top. And and um, I think that that – well, and. Toby Hooper said that he wanted he didn't he thought that the first one was a, oh, comedy. It was a comedy yeah, yeah. he was like why yeah. do people not think this is a fucking comedy so he was like I am hell bent on making a comedy and he gave Dennis Hopper about five pounds of cocaine and you know <laughs> he was like just make a movie and so that's TCM too and then the, then New Line Cinema was like you know what was really cool when the movie was all about Leatherface. Let's make a Leatherface movie and so that's where we get <laughs> well, not TCM3. only that they, they reboot the entire look like they still wanted him to have like that gentle giant approach, but his his face set up, the hair, everything. They of course, the cosplayer would say something like well, this. No, <laughs> uh, yeah, they kind of took away. They kind of took away the. Um, they took away like a little bit of the drag queen aspect of. But they brought it. Back oh, they brought it back in part four Holy big time. Shit. Yes, they did. I'm looking at notes, Marissa. <laughs> <laughs> He'll edit that part out. Don't Jeez. worry. He's actually swiping right on Tinder. <laughs> <laughs> Grinder, not Tinder. <laughs> uh, he'll cut that. Uh, so, so uh, th- did either of you guys see this movie as like, are you afraid of the dark TCM edition? Because that's what it feels like to me. Like this it, whole fucking movie. It's the like the opening credit crawl definitely sounds like the lead up before they threw the sand into the fire. Yeah, <laughs> like, exa- that, like that's my first note is literally <laughs> like the dark. Yeah, they're just like, you know, they, they just outline what happened in the first movie again. But he, the thing that they do with the intro crawl that I the, actually the, the worst part about this movie is that it has so much potential in the intro where he's basically cut out, cutting up a new mask. And it's like, I know it's just fake blood and latex, but the sound effects are just like... Well, it's like it's, really uh, disturbing and it's, gross. It's very... Another new line thing. It's very similar to Freddy building the glove in... Oh, yeah. It's, it's absolutely derivative. I don't care. <laughs> <You know? laughs> but, yeah, like... It's never been a problem for our podcast. I, I do like... It's it's so overdramatic with that voiceover. But I do like the one aspect where they're like, they, they caught a guy and he was sentenced to death. And if that is who this Leatherface was that she referred to, then, like, this dead person can sleep soundly. But if not, God have mercy on us all. Yeah. Basically, it's like... Pretty... I mean, <laughs> like, I mean it's like... You're right. It's so overdramatic because you're in... A, you're, you're not watching Citizen Kane. <laughs> you know, you're watching Leatherface. <laughs> and literally, this movie has a part where... A, where... Is it Alfredo? Is the the one who's like, rah, 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 yeah, like scratching his head? Yeah, <laughs> sorry, that's a very visual. This is the problem when we do Tom. live episodes. Peeping Tom, that know. was perfect. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. He's the peeping Tom. Thank you. And and he he's literally throwing body parts into a pond, and he goes, "Is it soup yet?" And now I don't know if they thought that Alfredo was gonna take Leatherface's position as the the truly wacky character in the family, and Leatherface was gonna be like, "Cause figured he was like a chop top." They were trying yeah. to go for like yeah, the well, new chop they top. Literally, were going for can chop you top. can you imagine the merchandising on that? Just in <laughs> I general, want a if shirt. they really wanted to, you know, make it through, like just like his face, like wacky to the side, like a Captain Spalding us, and like, is it soup yet? <laughs> See, that's the thing is that you're basically setting up for the next line of horror movie night T-shirt designs. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I'm yeah. not even kidding. It's so, true. so they didn't know what this movie was though. Have you ever seen the original trailer for this movie? Yeah, where the, is that where they the, where the actual saw comes out of the water like they Lady do the a Lake? King Arthur trailer? It's amazing. If you <laughs> so haven't if you, watched it, yeah, you gotta watch if, it. As before, the Frankenhooker crew, crew comes up, or if you're listening at home, pause the podcast, look up this one minute trailer. It's just like every once in a while a legend is born, and it's just this person standing by a lake. And they're like like the tale of the lady in the lake who brought the sword to King Arthur. And then this woman's hand rises out of the lake holding a chainsaw and tosses it in the air. And the person standing by the river grabs the chainsaw, turns around, and it's Leatherface. And then it just says, oh Leatherface coming soon. 
supposedly they shot that before they ever had a script. <laughs> uh, that makes absolute sense to me because <laughs> yeah. I- I'm actually still wondering if they had a script for this movie in the first. I mean, at the, uh, at, at I, I, the no. end no. of it. So fun With fact the- that I learned on IMDb was that the director of this movie was fired at the start of production. But then no one was willing to take his and place, so they, so they rehired him back. Him back. <laughs> <laughs> so this movie is also really cool in the fact that I learned a new word, and this is this shows you what kind of a fucking nerd I am. Um, so there's this thing called adiposeer, and I, I I I find myself to be pretty good at 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 spelling. It took me a good five minutes of googling to find out how to spell this. So adiposeer is real, and. Um, yeah, I'm going to spell it. Obviously, if you're in the audience, you can Google it at your risk. And anybody at home, Google it at your risk. Because I made the mistake of Googling it and decided that it wasn't time for lunch at this point. So it's spelled A-D-I-P-O-C-E-R-E. And it is the uh, what the fat cells in your body do when you are decomposing in a wet, bacteria-rich environment. And that's what I'm saying is, like, this movie could have been super gruesome. Yeah. It but could have been. They, th- th- but actually, instead the you... best shit happens before you even see actual Leatherface. Yeah. No, yeah. I, f- I feel like once you actually meet the family, the whole thing falls apart. Uh, well, I will say that the creepy girl. No, 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 <laughs> no. No. What, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to remember offhand. Um, primary character comes in, sees a little girl thinking, oh, wow, this little girl's I wrote danger. the note down. Yeah. And she comes down. And what does the little girl say? Um. Wait, hold on a second. I think I wrote down. Uh, this yeah, too. yeah. <laughs> Was it yakety yak? Don't talk yeah. back, because I have that written and she's down. She's holding a, <laughs> a dead baby dressed up <laughs> like a baby's skeleton in a dress that matches her dress. Like the only oh, thing she's a terrible actor. The only oh, thing that mean, they did well. I mean, she's like with, eight, but still. <laughs> the only thing they did well with that little girl is kind of the general development. A couple scenes after that, where you know, guys hanging upside down. They've got everything set up, like about to you know just fuck his whole life up, right? And then it's like, I want to try. And it's like kind of like passing on the tradition and the family. And it's like, okay, like that's the one aspect the really outside of the first like 15 minutes of this film. That is the only aspect of that film that was actually really good. I found myself writing down. I paused at least five times and just wrote down fucking Aragorn. <laughs> <laughs> like I, I, I can't help it. I, I see him and that's all that I think. And, you know, it, it's like going from the hero-esque, you know, character that everyone knows him as is just like some slime ball that like, you know, fucks random girls outside of a gas station by trying to be a hero. Like it's just uh, no. But was His he really whole trying to have plan is insane. There like, is no uh, plan. No, there's a, there's a like a Rube Goldberg plan <laughs> here. Like it involves like a fake gas station robbery with information they provided about a road that leads to their house for them to get in a car accident in so they can make them into burgers. Like you can <laughs> like you can, like the, you can tell that's up front, their plan. <laughs> you can tell up front how shitty a film's gonna be if within the first twenty minutes somebody's gassing up in the middle of nowhere and some kind of cute guy compared to like has to be cute because other dude's just a fucking weirdo peeping well, Tom. The, the other guy's taking a photo of you and then popping into your window instead of pumping the gas and being like, the picture, it's a good picture. You want a picture? I'll sell you five dollars. Five dollars. <laughs> but, you know, anytime you see a film and it's some dude and he's like, oh, no, something's going on. Yeah, I know the map says to go that way, but this Don't way this is way. a lot faster and it's Why way more Vigo safe. Why does sound like and, Keanu and, and, Reeves? And, uh, and, uh, basically, <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, but it, it's one of those things that you know a film is nothing good is going to come after that, after the point that they actually decide to take that road. Like, it's not going to be good. Well, no, it can be bad good. I mean, like, it can well, be... Well, yeah, in this case, it was. It could be TCM4. Yeah, oh. <laughs> <laughs> I would argue that TCM4 is not even bad good, and go back into our back catalog about <laughs> six months and listen to that. Why did we do both of these within a year? Because you wanted Kyle to guest on the episode. <laughs> oh, okay. So it's my fault. Yeah, you picked it. Uh, um, I, so, did I pick TCM? Yeah, you did. Oh, shit. Uh, so <laughs> there is that double car accident, which was like the holy shit moment of holy shit moments for me because it just came out of fucking nowhere. <laughs> they blew so much money on the car wrecks in this movie. Yeah. Well, they wanted this was they wanted this to become like their big franchise. But there's no, there's nothing about this movie that makes it endearing at all i mean like there are bad movies that we discuss that are endearing with a much smaller budget yeah this is weird for weird sake a lot of the time like 
the old lady with the robot voice, the little That's girl. The mother. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I'm just she saying. also they're also incestuous now. Yeah. Yeah. She basically <laughs> says that Leatherface, who is her son, likes to molest everybody, and he's quote unquote really good with his hands. Yeah, which again, it feels like they changed. I don't know. The '90s were wild, dude. Grunge was on the radio. <laughs> <laughs> no, but uh, speaking, Nirvana of... was recording Nevermind when this was happening. That doesn't mean shit. I'm just setting a time frame. I, I do have <laughs> to say the, <laughs> the one absolute redeeming factor to this film for me, 100, percent is the soundtrack. Really, absolutely the soundtrack. Laws I, Rocket. I, yes, Leather yes. Face. Bay Area, early '90s thrash. Fuck but yeah, this isn't day. even that good of Bay Area thrash. <laughs> like it's uh, as a thrash connoisseur myself, I would say that Laz Rocket this was asshole thrash connoisseur at best. All right, but they did send you an invitation. <laughs> to <Don't> the <have a> face! <laughs> I know that that was a setup, and I appreciate that. I, that's what I'm here You're for. Welcome. Setting the, up the, the volleyball. The sound wave for this fucking episode just, just looks like <laughs> like one of the the graboids from Tremors just popped out of the ground. <laughs> uh. So what are your thoughts on the – I feel like of all of the movies, part four included, this is the least thrilling reveal of Leatherface. Oh, this movie is absolute garbage. There's nothing entertaining about – I mean, I really don't find any entertainment value in this movie. I, it was a brisk 72 minutes. Oh, because you, like, you fast-forwarded some shit. No, it was 72 <laughs> minutes. And then I fast-forwarded it so it was like 50. <laughs> <laughs> It was painful. Every time, jo just so you know, whenever you're listening, every time Scott opens his mouth, the guy who submitted this is just looking at him like, fuck you, man. Yeah. No, <laughs> he's Eli taking, and I. He's almost disappeared out of his seat at this point. No, Eli loves this. This is like the best part of his day he, right He's now. not sliding down yeah. out of comfort. He he's traveled all the way anger. from Los Angeles just for this okay, moment. Listen, he didn't travel. <laughs> okay, you're making me sound terrible. He, he now it's lives true, on though. the East Coast. It's true, though. Shame can, on you. He told us, literally, word for word, I didn't need much, uh, like, I, I, you barely had to suggest I come down. I, I think he said there was a yeah. bit of arm, um, don't metaphors, worry about it. Metaphors are escaping me right now, but we have not mentioned the fact that Ken Foree yes, is in this Yes, 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 that, that is honestly the, the most, that, that's the reason the why I didn't turn off the film. That one hundred percent. So you have to. Th so he plays Benny, who is one hundred percent the best character in this movie, but the least re like rational person. Because are the you, AK are you though. <laughs> <laughs> but are you really trying to tell me that this guy randomly goes out into the Texas wilderness with and just, guns just and just goes in guns and plays like hide and seek with guns with his buddies is basically and where goes, is buddies? we do a weekly survival trip is what he says and he still gets <laughs> I mean he's still there he dies in the director's cut but when they showed it to test audiences they're like oh we liked Benny so he just is alive at the end of the movie he gets slashed yeah, down the back you see like like you see him get a cut and it's going through his head and then the next time you see him and it's he's gone. alive, it's like a cat scratched his forehead. <laughs> like, it is the I Wolverine. guess it's Mark. Like Now Wolverine. is a good time to tell you that this was the first time that you see Wolverine on screen. Exactly, yes. Because that was the healing factor. <laughs> <laughs> Same thing with Leatherface. Leatherface was scheduled or shot to die in this movie. And they're like, well, you know, we got a franchise here. So we got to. No. Oh, my God. But he actually does die. Yeah. He dies in but the he water. Was, yeah. And then he gets run over, right? Yeah. But he's, he's not Michael Myers. I mean, who is? But <laughs> it's it's a it's a rough one. Yeah. Well, I have more to thing to say about. Oh, I'm sure you do. <laughs> uh, so the guy who played Leatherface in this movie, I can't remember his name. Well, Kane Hodder did a lot of it. But the right, but the other guy. Yeah, the other um, guy. Okay, thank you. He thank was you. just fuck yeah. A, fuck yeah. I, I, you, as you sh as you can tell, I don't do my my research for when we do shows. I just I want to talk about Ken Fury and like you know Laz Rocket. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> so so <laughs> fucking Bay Area thrash, man. All day. <laughs> listen, if, if I'm gonna listen to '80s Bay Area thrash, I want to listen to like Among the Living. I want to I want to watch that part in It Chapter One where they. Have anthrax, anthrax, just in a in a rock fight. That is amazing. He'll never admit it, but in music and in film, he's elitist. As, as you're saying. <laughs> I just did. <laughs> like I know you've had a beer, but like you, just listen to me a little bit. Anyway, 
I don't even know where I was going. Oh, I went to a con, and that guy was there with the saw, the prop saw that says the saw is family. That thing is massive. Yeah. It's, a, it's, it's as big as you think it is. <laughs> but, and that's, you know, you can take me out of context. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, I'm going to use that just on that audio <laughs> clip later. Best that's going on the second five. shirt. Here it comes. <laughs> um, I have one note that I don't understand what oh, it wait, means. Wait, wait, wait. Are you talking about the, the food note? No, it just says... Did not realize I needed Leatherface on a speaking spell. A speaking spell? Yeah, is there a scene where he's like playing with like a speaking spell? Uh, yeah, that's what I'm talking about. <laughs> okay. hey, there's a clown, <laughs> and it says, uh, what is this? And he types in food. Yeah, and he keeps doing that <laughs> over and over. Yeah. And then he gets like really pissed off at the fact that But he doesn't he's break the correct. speaking spell. No, because he wants to get it right. Yeah, he wants yeah. to learn. <laughs> and, and that's where they're keeping where the gentle giant Don't you get it? That's where Leatherface is relatable. <laughs> He's flawed like all of us, but he wants to improve himself. Michelle Pfeiffer comes out of the woodwork, and she's like, I will teach you. This is Dangerous yes. Minds, yes. Texas Edition. Oh, my God. I watched the shit out of Dangerous Minds starring Leatherface. Are you kidding me? <laughs> like, like, she walks in, and she's like, you don't always have to kill people, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Can we get Ken Faree to be Coolio <laughs> doing doing the Gangster's Paradise video? Yeah, but it actually would have but with to the be. Gash in his yes, exa- thank you. You know me way too. Oh yeah, well. we've been doing this for seven years. We're like a married couple. Yo, and and <laughs> and I do actually think that a really great ringtone, which I talk about ringtones on the podcast quite a you bit. You do for a dead technology <laughs> that like, no one uses. Like, like the only the only ringtones I hear anymore are like. The Halloween soundtrack. That's like the, the or the Kim Hel- Possible. I hear Kim Possible a lot as a text message noise. <laughs> <laughs> Who the fuck are you hanging out with? <laughs> I'm at a convention children. a lot. <laughs> yeah, our first convention together was an anime convention, so I think that kind of sets the stage for what you might <laughs> be enough, expecting from enough, Matt Kelly. Enough. So if we get the get Viggo Mortensen yelling, "Go get the meat!" <laughs> I would love to have that as a ringtone because as a vegan. I like to keep things spicy. <laughs> yeah, you had this weird obsession. I, you know what? This is a good time to ask this. You had a weird obsession for a Still long do. for a long time with always wanting to pick accidental cannibal movies. Yeah, Motel Hell, TCM two, this movie. Um, the list does not go on and on, but those are the ones that come almost to mind. Almost Parents. <laughs> oh, I almost picked Parents a couple weeks ago, um, and it's just kind of a good movie. Like it's just a weird movie that is. Really, I I love accidental cannibalism, and I love stuff from the 1950s, and it really clicked all the buttons, but it wasn't bombastic, so I couldn't really pick it for us. And um, I I highly recommend if you like horror and haven't seen Parents 1989, watch it. But you won't ever hear us. What? Starring Randy Quaid. Starring Randy Quaid. Yeah, (laughs) and and also it's it's very. I mean, it's it's trying to be. are they or aren't they cannibals? But you know from the from the very first moment that they're cannibals. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's not a, a big secret there. No, no. All right, so. Oh, oh I got another one. One last one. Um, uh, Night of the uh, – uh, uh, Night of the Chicken Dead. Um, oh, Poultry Geist. Poultry Geist, which <laughs> I – Night of the Sorry, Chicken Chris. Dead. Yes. <laughs> the best thing about that movie, though, is the theme song. Performed by uh, Newfound Glory. As under the, Calamari un- Safari. Yeah, under the fake name Calamari Safari. It's one My of the best Newfound Glory songs. Names. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it, it, and also, you know, arguably, and I've said this before on this show, and we'll say it again in perpetuity, that Newfound Glory is the most reliable pop punk band of all time. I'll agree with that. All right, so... What else do we have to go here? Because uh, I've, I've tapped out our, my notes here. Let's get into the double features. Okay. So, Josh, you're our guest. We do... a. Since we're doing this live, we'll explain. We do a little segment at the end of the show called Double Features. We pick the perfect movie that you would watch immediately after or immediately before Leatherface. If you were, you know, bringing your friends over, you're like, hey, man, we got a sweet double feature. You just strap in. It's going to be a good time. And then you torture them and show them Leatherface <laughs> Part 3. What else are you showing them? If they stayed around, 1990s Blood Salvage. Dude, that's on my long list for this yeah. show. It, 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 it's perfect because you have Evander Holyfield right before he becomes Wait, WBC really? champion. Yep. Wow. You have John Saxon, who is always a dad, a cop, and somehow <laughs> a he's a not yeah, or a, a dad cop. Dad cop. <laughs> and that right there Coming is enough that if summer. you have never watched that film, it is insane. And in, in just the way that they shot it, it is absolutely a shit film that 99% of you, unless you are absolutely bored out of your mind and it's on Tubi or something, probably won't watch it. You can watch it if on YouTube. If you do watch it, <laughs> it is 
it's actually a fun way to kill about 80, 90 minutes if you need to sober up before going somewhere. All right. Uh, or I will, sleep. I mean, <laughs> I don't know what you I'll, I'll take your too. blood salvage, and I will raise you uh, something that we've actually done on the podcast before, Blood Diner. Ooh, uh, Ooh that's another accidental <laughs> cannibalism movie yeah, that I love. So if you've never seen Blood Diner, it is one of the strangest movies I've ever watched. Actually, Blood Diner would be an amazing double feature with Frank and Hooker, which yes. is playing in a couple. Oh, man. But, uh, You're really so, doing it for me right now. So Blood Diner uh, is an unofficial sequel to Blood Feast from the 60s. And it's about two brothers who watch their favorite uncle get gunned down for being a serial killer. Uh, but he gave them, like, all these cool recipes, so they just become cannibals and open a diner where they just serve people. But they dug up their uncle's brain, and it can talk to them telepathically. <laughs> uh, it's fucking wild. <laughs> but yeah, and, and you got to get to the blood buffet. That's oh, yeah, yeah, the, blood, the, yeah. The, the We're uncle... going to serve them a blood buffet. Is like... It's the weirdest accent. It's like Yugoslavian, <laughs> but if... A Canadian thought He's, that he knew what he could do. <laughs> he <laughs> sounds Canadian. like um, William Sadler doing death in Bill and Ted's Bogus <laughs> Journey. This is actually selling Bill and Ted's Bogus <laughs> Journey for me, and that's saying a lot because we did a uh, bonus episode. No, that was that was the first episode of this year. Oh, God, it's <laughs> painful. No, I love I'm that not a slapstick guy. Yeah, you got booed. All. Good. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but I will watch the, the, the third installment that they're doing. That they oh, I'll graphic. watch the shit out of that third installment. All right, Scott, what's your double feature here? All right, so I had one. I forgot what it was, and then we were talking about Lord of the Rings. And so if we're talking Viggo Mortensen, we're going to have to talk about Elijah Wood. And one of my favorite remakes of all time uh, is Maniac 2012. Yeah. So if we're doing... If we're doing a before, or well, or just we're doing a, a tertiarily related to Lord of the Rings, I'm gonna start with TCM Leatherface. I'm gonna fight my way through that 82 minutes or whatever it is. <laughs> uh, maybe it's 72. Now it's 72, it now 82. 82. I can promise you okay, it's not well, 50, it 72, like 82, lifetime. whatever. <laughs> I, I, my first lifetime is TCM 3 Leatherface, and then I get to just revel in the bliss of Maniac 2012, <laughs> which has quite possibly the greatest uh, horror soundtrack of the last decade. And I will fight anybody that says that Rob's Maniac soundtrack isn't an absolute work of art. I mean, not really fight you. I'll just probably yeah. be like, okay. Because <laughs> I'm a wimp. All right, one last quick thing. Uh, so we've still got a little bit of time, so I think we were planning to skip this, but let's go th forward with it. Uh, just oh, what's God. something that you've watched recently? How about you, Joshua? Oh, if you need God. time, I'll go first because I saw please, some shit please, that I need to talk TCM3 about. Please, because TCM3 kind of okay. turned me off from cinema. So, <laughs> so <laughs> you, How many times did you watch it? Three times? Yeah. You're an idiot. <laughs> so I, uh, I try to see as many movies as possible because I have both the AMC and the Regal Unlimited card, so I need to get my $40 worth every <laughs> month. Flex. Um, Flex. So on my drive here, I stopped at a movie theater. I thought you were going like, to say on my drive here, I was watching a movie while yeah, I was driving. Yeah, no, I, I literally I planned out my trip so I would drive for an hour and a half, stop and see a movie, and then drive for the other hour that to get here. sounds so grueling to me. Um, and I stopped to see 47 Meters Down Uncaged, which might be the worst movie You're of the year. You're also an idiot. Why am I surrounded by idiots? <laughs> it is... So I liked 47 <laughs> Meters Down. It was fine. It's you not great. You love shark movies, though. I love shark movies. This is his fetish. This was bad. <laughs> like, I didn't realize what the actual premise of this movie is. So I want you to – I want to explain this premise to you so you can – well, it, It's right. got sharks. Can't we do that? So it's a bunch of high schoolers decide – so the one girl's dad is an archaeologic scuba diver who discovers uh, Mayan burial grounds – in the water. I mean, is it, isn't that so relatable, though? Like so, all my high school friends, <laughs> archaeological scuba divers. So they like, decide to scuba dive and look at these like Mayan ruins. And while they're down there, they find out that all of the uh, aquatic life has been trapped in this darkness. So they're all blind, but have all of their other senses are stronger. And they're surrounded by these blind but hypersensitive sharks that end up caving in the walls of the tomb, so they're trapped in there. Would your double feature be with the do. last shark? Because that's what I'm hearing Jesus. right now. Jesus. It's there's like one moment. It, I mean, it's it's already been done once before, but there's a point where they're talking to someone, and he's like, "Guys, don't worry about this. We got this. We just got to swim past those sharks." And whoa! And he just gets lifted out of the water as the sharks attacking him. And I laughed so hard, and it was not, not supposed to be funny. Not intentionally funny, like, yeah. Uh, but yeah, so 
not a recommend. Just a, I, I sat through that. I, I, I lived it. Yeah. And I'm going to do you one – well, not one better, but I'm going to go along the same path where I was so ja- – okay, so a uh, friend of the podcast who also does all of our In Theaters Now episodes, which are just modern movies that we discuss, and we, we did an episode of Midsummer, and our friend Katie uh, – We didn't. We, we – Oh, I'm sorry. We didn't do Midsummer. Yeah. We did – Scary Stories to Tell in the yes. Dark, and then we mentioned Midsummer. Yeah, yeah. So we, did, we didn't do Midsummer, but uh, Katie was super jazzed about Midsummer because she loves Ari Aster, and um, she was she's seen it like three times now. And uh, I, I was like, okay, you're excited for Midsummer. I'm upsi- excited for the Banana Splits movie. <laughs> uh, so, <laughs> yes. which if you don't know yes. anything about, it is the slasher take on killer robot banana splits from the 1970s. So it's the it's on Prime now. I think I rented it for three bucks the other day, and um. It was underwhelming. I oh. I was a little bit disappointed that it. W- there were some great kills, but it was also about ten minutes too long. And when you have an hour and a half movie that's ten minutes too long, that hurts you because that means that your pacing is still rough. But um, it w- it was a good way to kill an hour and a half. I didn't fast forward at all. Oh, look at you! I'm very proud, proud of, of myself for that. But um, I just want more filmmakers to make something as bombastic and ridiculous as, hey, we're going to buy the rights for this <laughs> 70s kids show, and we're going to make them murder adults. <laughs> That's what the world needs. Yes. Thank you for the scattered yes, applause. Agreed. That's exactly what the world and needs. And, Josh? So I, I watched about a week and a half ago oh, in please. a sleepless slumber, I would say, honestly, the best horror film of 2019. Oh. Leaving Neverland. Oh, Jesus. Okay. No. I literally enthralled at just the craziness that keeps coming forward over and over and over, and it just gets more and more wild. And, yeah, that – I don't know. that that Have either of you guys watched that? No. Or in any portions of it? I know enough to yeah, not no. want to watch yeah, it. Yeah, I'm not going to watch it. I'm not a true crime dude. Uh, I, my wife was a documentary lady. <laughs> so, uh, and, and I think she watched half of it and was like, I don't like the fact that it felt like they were, she's, she can be an elitist about, yeah, about yeah. docs. And so she doesn't like documentaries. And I think that Matt will probably back me up on this where they kind of feed you a truth. And I feel well, that, like that's that the was majority of doing. documentaries. That's, a, that's well, where they get the, no, that's, that's the majority value. of documentaries. The really good documentaries are the ones that give you information and don't lead you to a conclusion. Yeah, let you kind of build right. off of it. That's, which is, that's the importance of a documentary. Which is fair enough. All right, so uh, I think the Frank and Hooker people are here. I don't know. Yay! Maybe. There we we'll go. See. I'm not sure. Now we can get I'm a real round of applause. Yeah. Well, listen, you're here, so <laughs> when they show up, you're going to watch the fucking movie. Yeah. So real quick, I just want to thank all you guys for sitting here and watching. And while we like to come up here and have a good time, I do want to talk about something real quick, which is that horror films for me, and I think for a lot of people, have been a way for us to make an escape. And I can speak for Scott, myself, Brian, and I'm pretty sure Josh, when we can all say that, like, We've all had really dark points in our life, and I feel like being given opportunities to sit up here in front of people, it's important to say, like, take care of yourselves. Take care of yourselves. Learn to love yourselves. I personally didn't love myself for a very long time. Therapy is super good and super and useful. okay. And Please useful. go to therapy. I Do go to therapy, not, too. I, I feel like I see a lot of people stigmatizing it, so I just wanted to take a quick opportunity to say love yourselves and use that to love this stuff that we love. Don't be in, af- in a healthy way. Yeah, in a healthy way. Don't be afraid to love these things and be who you truly are because uh, the world is going to constantly make you feel like you shouldn't be. So thank you guys so much for watching, uh, and we will continue to do podcasts as Excellent. long as people continue to listen to them. So thank you so much. Thank you so much. And hopefully the Frank and Hooker people will be up here soon, but we're going <laughs> to get off the stage. Yeah. <laughs>